following podcast is part of the Underdog Sports Podcasting Network. For a full list of our shows, as well as breaking sports news and engaging feature stories, visit us at www.theunderdogsports.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Saturday, March 10th, 2018. My name is Rich, and joining me is the next American Ninja Warrior, Bijan. <laughs> How are you making it? Hurt? I'll ding for that. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Not much. You know, it's been a boring week. You know, it's been kind of yeah. quiet. Not much going on. How about you? You been doing anything interesting lately? Uh, yeah, you know, just hanging out, not doing much. I, I was, I was in. I, I visited LA for a bit. You know, I just hung out there for for a few days. Oh yeah. Any you know, any wild parties? Not, not doing much. You know, see anybody? Uh, yeah. Maybe that we uh, might know. <laughs> I, I I think I saw everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Name a Ninja Warrior, most likely I saw them. <laughs> wow, it, it is so cool that you get to do that. Uh, no spoilers for, you know, obviously, <laughs> Bajan can't share and won't share, just for the record, will not share how he did with me. Lips are sealed. So I got to wait along with everybody else, except for those of you that were there, and, uh, to see how he did. Hopefully, we'll get to see it this uh, May 30th, is it? May 30th, guys. Uh, that's the premiere date. They just announced it, and I'm excited. Uh, all I'll say is what I came to do, I feel like I I accomplished, which was entertain. And and I don't I, I don't know. I don't think that's really a spoiler, Rich. No, I, I think you're good to say that. <laughs> I came there. I came there to entertain, make make it fun. I did not want to be the, one of them boring guys that are just like straight focus, you know, just run, no personality, nothing, you know, nothing wrong with that. Not saying anything, but you know, I don't know. I hope I hope everybody that was out there enjoyed my run. I hope. Everybody enjoyed their time there, and I got to say, I'm so humbled uh, to be part of the whole experience. Everybody there from the production side, the crew, everything, they were so cool. It's crazy that pretty much all of them knew me. Like, they they like they like just saw my face like, hey, Bijan, what's up? You're from Archer? And I'm like, whoa, hey, what's up? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, man, it's, yeah, it's crazy, Rich. But, um... All of them so awesome. You know, I it, it's hard because I want to be respectful. I don't know if they want me to name names, so, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. But um, you guys know who you are. You guys were freaking amazing, so gracious, and I had the time of my life. Something I will never, ever forget and always be grateful of. Uh, the ninjas I met, just amazing, amazing people. I've never seen such a communion of uh, almost a family-like vibe of everybody just amping each other up, giving hugs, just being the, the kindest, most gracious people. All the newbies like me, you know, we're all like a little nervous, you know, a little anxious. I'm trying to stay calm, cool, collected, chilling. Everybody's just there like being like, hey, it's all good, brother. Like, you know, have fun, hang out. You know, it just, it was so cool. After the premiere, guys, I'm going to have a whole lot more stories for you. I just want to be respectful f to the show and everything. And I don't want to spoil anything, really. Yeah, yeah. We have to be really careful about that, I guess. So what I will ask is, do you think the course uh, looks good? Do you think we're going to be excited to see? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, let's just say from the first, from the, oh, boy, from the L.A. qualifiers, they are not playing, guys. They are not playing. If if you're worried about some UK Ninja Warrior crap or anything, don't worry about that. This is a the this course was freaking legit. They're coming out to play in season ten, and I could not be more happier about that. I mean, I you know I uh, as a competitor, you know, <laughs> just like hey, you know, you guys could have gone back to like season three where you know you know just swinging over a, a group of water. Like I wouldn't be complaining. <laughs> But as a viewer, let's just say they hooked y'all up. You guys are going to get some amazing, amazing obstacles and some really, really memorable runs. And, I, man, there, there's some stuff that I want to talk about, but I'm not going to touch it. It's just there is some really cool stuff that they have. And I'm I'm so excited to just talk about it with everybody. Yeah, we may have to even. I feel like there's going to be so much to talk about that maybe we'll do like a special episode just for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that'll be coming in June. So for now, we're going to take a look at Ninja vs. Ninja Episode 2. Yeah, man. Uh, fun stuff. I I'm curious, though, uh, for you, uh, before I give my thoughts, the fact that we had a team that was so 
much stronger. And, it, it, you know, it's all subjective, but The Breakfast Club really did dominate. Do you feel like that diminished from the entertainment factor for you? I'm curious. Nope, not at all, because we had some really cool okay. runs. There was individual runs that were great. Mm-hmm. I don't think either one of us picked Le Breakfast Club to, to win this whole thing, did we, in our top three? No, no, not top three. I picked them last week, but no, I, I did not pick them in to win that at all. And man, I oof, they are looking mighty, mighty strong. <laughs> I guess my concern, but I, I did consider them, uh, especially because Jesse and John are so strong. It was Chris DeGangie was kind of a question mark for me. I didn't know how fast he would be was, was my question. Um, and I learned that he's pretty fast. He's good. So uh, this team yeah. is going to be the, one of the ones to watch for sure. Yeah. I mean, we have two very strong teams already in the finals with Team Ronin and the Breakfast Club. Uh, going back, I have to say, I, I found it incredibly entertaining still. And I didn't know if it was my own bias or like me just like, you know, being on a high or whatever. But yeah, I don't think at all the fact that we had a, such a strong team winning everything diminished from the entertainment value of the episode. Uh, if anything, for me, at least, I was just waiting to see who can like knock down the breakfast club, like who can give them, you know, um, some struggle more than anything else. though, I have to say the course for this episode just win all around that is a ding for win guys that was freaking awesome i love the fact that they changed two aspects of the course up this episode one thing i've been like harping on forever that i wanted and and i'm so happy that they're you know it, it who whatever like i'm sure a lot of people were i'm just so happy that they're they're implementing more and more changes it just freshens up the episode and i have to say the two obstacles really played a major major part in this episode especially for the fact that we had people like john alexis jr with his arm reach with his wingspan and then we had tyler yamauchi where that played a big detriment for him also being a shorter competitor so all around i love the fact that we have a lot of changes it just makes for i don't know like a much fresher feel yeah, I almost wonder if they were trying to set up a, a John Alexis Jr. versus Travis Wine and uh, showdown there, but uh, yeah. we didn't get that. Tra- they're pretty close in height. Travis Wine is what six five, I think they Something said, right? Something like that. Yeah, he was really tall too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've seen that dude in person. That dude is tall. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that would be very interesting because I have to imagine their wingspans fairly similar. Uh, so taking a look at the the breakdown of the episode a little bit here we our first matchup we had dark horse that's lance picus tammy mcclure and carson voiles versus midwest muscle tyler yamuchi kirsty pratt and ethan swanson uh midwest muscle was my pick for the week uh that i wanted to see win it all uh unfortunately didn't happen they uh they get knocked out in the first round but a a, a good battle like a good back and forth between them i loved a lot of these races yeah, what 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 surprised me was Tyler Yamauchi struggling on the uh, is it pole grasper? Is that the name of yeah, it? Yeah, 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 pole grasper. Um, I I was I was stunned. It, it it really shouldn't like surprise me in retrospect, right? Because he does have you know he's just shorter, and, and pole grasper is gonna lead you know help out some of that's got a longer wingspan. But I didn't really like expect him to struggle as much as he did. And it's all in the moment, you know, the the way things happen. But that surprised me. And I, I don't know. I If anything, I really enjoyed the fact that the, the runs were very close. Except for Tyler's, unfortunately. But other than that, yeah, they were very close. So it could have been anybody's game, really. I liked a lot of these matchups. Carson versus Ethan to kick it off was actually one of my favorite ones. I thought it was really good. Um, Carson is so fast. I remembered him being fast, but I couldn't remember how fast until I saw him go. And he was really just booting her down the course. Yeah, it, it, he's he's one of those sleepers, you know, where every year you're like, of course, dude, the guy is so fast. But then a year goes by and you kind of like forget. He doesn't stand out to the point where like, it's not like, like Matt Wilder, right? Where he just stands out like insanely it's like oh boy matt wilder's coming up get ready or or anything like that but dude is very 
very good, <laughs> especially in this particular way. Yeah, just some people are built for Ninja versus Ninja, man. Yeah, Kirsty Pratt was back, one of our favorites. Uh, we get to see her go up against Kirsty uh, against Tammy uh, McClure. Yeah, she hit the buzzer again. She made her three and zero. I was very excited. I thought, oh yeah, we're gonna get to see them go through. Um, but that was the only solo run we get to see. I gotta say, there was a, a little point of almost controversy. Thankfully, it didn't end up being a, a big deal. What did you think when Tammy went off the course on the first relay? Because I was really annoyed that there was no penalty for that. She went sideways and lands on the side, but was able to continue on without any kind of penalty. And even when she was tagging, I think she was tagging in Lance, actually. I know it would have been Carson. She was tagging in Carson, uh, and he was looking back like, yeah, is it okay? Like, can I go? Um, it didn't end up mattering in the end because they won that. They lost that round anyway. But uh, yeah, I was, I was really strange because she didn't land in the water. She landed on the side of the whole thing. Yeah, and the side. I mean, I have to watch back, but I feel like the side made it a little bit easier for her. I could be wrong in that in that front, but I mean, really, I go back and forth. It really depends on how the rules were uh, given out to the competitors. Because we just don't know what was fair game and what wasn't. Um, I I don't know. I, I guess it's okay just because Ninja versus Ninja leads itself more towards speed. So there there can be a little bit more uh, lackadaisical for, with the rules. But as long as they make that rule the same for everybody else, I'm cool with it. I guess the thing that I was thinking of is we've had that so many times on Team Ninja. And you're right. It, it is kind of a a thing that we've seen over and over again where people have ended up on the sides from, I don't know, it was the ring of fire. I think one of the times they end up on the side, they've had some weird ones where they get swinging sideways and like run up the side of the pool to continue on. So I don't know. Those guys like fall off the, the whole course though. I feel like if you fall off the whole thing like that, it, it's different because she kind of just landed on this little pad on the side, but still I, I understand what you mean though, because it does seem like it's off course. If you were on American Ninja Warrior, no way would she be continuing. Right. I wonder if maybe it's just, if it's incidental, right? Obviously, she wasn't trying to land there. She wasn't, like, running up the side of it to avoid the obstacle. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I I don't know what I wanted there. It was just a a weird thing that happened, and I wonder if it's going to come into play with other runs. If something similar happens later on and they get penalized, that's where I'll have have an issue with it, you know? Uh, But if this is just a rule that they have for the show... It's fine. All fair game, you know? So, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where I'll have a stronger opinion when I see it again. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, to be continued, so to speak. But, hey, uh, I want to hear from everybody else. How do you guys feel about it? Hit us up on Twitter, you know? Let let us know. And since I did, you know, I knocked her a little bit there, but I got to say, you know, really great job by Tammy throughout the episode. She did not let falling behind stop her, and she ended up beating Kirsty on that second race through she did a fantastic job i was really impressed with her this episode oh yeah kirsty phenomenal um tammy also i mean both were the the one thing i always ask especially with ninja versus ninja is just give it your all go for it don't be super conservative uh with your approach and they they both went for it so that's all i can ask speaking of going for it we had a few incidences of people falling behind and just making these daredevil leaps to try to catch up i love it it's my (laughs) favorite part of ninja versus ninja is watching you know ethan swanson just trying to leap to the second uh the second spin cycle and who was it Uh, i think in this next match we had la breakfast club versus uh team tarzan there was one too someone that was really behind and made a really big jump yeah, the pole grasper is where a lot of people just made up room where they just went for broke and jumped like halfway across the poles and was able to catch themselves and make up a lot of room. And I don't know, that's that's very difficult to do. I mean, that gap has got to be plus five feet. <laughs> and that is a lot of momentum to catch yourself on. But they are doing it, and props to these guys. Like, going, not, not even going for broke, just going for it man just giving it your all and making it entertaining that's the other aspect make it entertaining i loved it so in the next matchup with the breakfast club and team tarzan i gotta say jesse lebrecht just impresses over and over and over again 
she is one of my favorites to watch. She is crazy strong, crazy consistent. My only regret is that we didn't get to see the show, uh, showdown of the Jessies this this season because that was one of the things I was looking forward to most. Yeah, but I got to say, at this point, I'm just I'm happy to see Jessica Brack doing very, very well. And I don't know. I think she's going to be a major, major key to her team's success. Way more than people are maybe expecting or seeing from this particular first episode. I think when it comes to the finals, she's going to be pivotal, absolutely pivotal to her team. Because the way this particular show is amping up to be with the relays playing a major, major portion of it, I think the women are going to, like, the the focus is going to be that much more on the women doing well. So you you have to have a very strong woman making up the lead or staying strong in the pocket. Right. And when you get, when you get teams where you have Megan Martin and team Ronan in the finals, you have to have a team like La breakfast club also there because like, I I love some of the other women on, on this episode, but you put any of those other women against Megan Martin. And unfortunately, I'm just going to say it. Megan Martin's going to blow past them and make, and, have a big deficit for for the rest of the team to catch up on i feel like somebody like uh flex Breck, she's gonna stay with megan martin the entire way yeah i couldn't agree more i think that's i think that is because of the rule change right we've seen now the effect it has it is making this a true team sport you can't have a weak link at all and most of the men are fairly evenly matched and it is in the women that we see kind of some bigger gaps in skill level and no disrespect to the, to the women that you know are a little behind the jesse lebrack for example uh yeah all these women uh, like all these women would destroy either of us <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know like they're they're still very amazing there's just like you know it, it's the comparison of drew dreschel and somebody else you know it's uh, there's a very high echelon of skill for the top women in the sport right and and there is that gap that they've got to try to make up at this point um which they will I'm sure they will, but at the... Yeah, give it time. Right, right now, there are a few that have kind of pulled away from the pack, and that is going to be very, very hard for a team that doesn't have that consistency on all three members at this point. By the way, I just rewatched right now <laughs> her falling off the course. Yeah, it's a little suspect rewatching it, <laughs> because the where she falls off the course is she would be in the water at that point. Yeah, completely. Like it's, it's not yeah. it's not in front of the water like envisioned before. It's literally off to the side where the water is at. So, yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, I don't know, man. I can very much understand if somebody has a problem with that. They may need to come up with a shorter penalty because I don't think that deserves like a full. What have we had before? Ten seconds or something? It's really long. Dude, yeah, that was bad because it, it it's such an extreme lead. Yeah, like, something such like an that. Extreme gap. Something like that should be, you know, like a shorter penalty for like a a misstep off the obstacle should be, you know, as as different from falling into the water directly. Yeah, what do you think? Like two seconds or something? Yeah, two or three seconds maybe or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're just making up rules, man. Yes. Like, <laughs> like we know better. Like we didn't think of this. We didn't think of <laughs> these rules. So, so they have some smart people working on this to come up with this scoring system because I love it. One of the, <laughs> I felt so bad for Ben Mee, like he was doing perfectly fine, but John Alexis Jr. is a monster on this course, and he just couldn't, like as fast as he was running, he just couldn't catch up to him, so he just went for broke and ended up falling in the water. I don't blame him at all. He had no hope but to just hurl himself across the course trying to catch up. How awesome would it be, though, if he caught it? Like, he he still wouldn't have made, like, beaten John Alexis Jr., no. but the visual would be absolutely amazing. <laughs> Tarzan making the swing for it. Yeah, it would have been really cool. I feel like John Alexis Jr. would be able to do it, though. How do you feel, man? Do you think John would do it, like, make it to the to the second swing? Quite possibly. It, it, it's hard to say. Like, him or Travis, like, those long, long... It's not just their height. I mean, their, their arms and everything is proportionally longer, too, so... The reach that they have is just phenomenal. Yeah. I don't know. Probably not the smartest thing to do, but I kind of want to see them try it. (laughs) Uh, So they clean swept Team Tarzan and moved on to the final. We had Dark Horse versus La Breakfast Club in the finals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going into this, I want to give a quick shout out to Lance Pekus. 
dude was really really good on this episode being like way i don't know it, it still shocks me how fast lance picus is for his size dude is yoked and just so fast so yeah i was just very very impressed with uh what do you call it? lance picus holding it down for his team what do you think was intro you were talking last week about how excited you were going to be to hear his his in, uh, intro music. Honestly, it was forgettable. Like, I, I don't know. The music didn't stand out at all to me. I didn't get any ridiculous twang or anything. Oh, he oh he had a full-on country twang going. I was laughing as Dude, soon as I, I heard it. Dude, I listen back to this. Yeah, play it. Was it his first <laughs> entrance or where was it? Yeah, it was first intra- first entrance. Bef- while I'm doing that, what do you think about Carson Voiles and the egg? Like, I forgot what he was saying, but like he, he pulls up an egg to the egg camera and has the cheesiest line I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. And I could not stop laughing. I was dying laughing. I, I don't even know. I, it's hard to even to say anything about it. I would normally call it cheesy and over the top and, and whatever. But it sounds like he had a very serious condition and the eggs really helped him. So I, I don't want to mock it too much. But I mean, no, no, it, it, the story was legit. Just I for, I, I have to find what they said. He said the most ridiculous thing, uh, like at the end of his vignette. Oh, yeah. The, the line that he had at the end was like, uh... oh, my God. So <laughs> I just heard it. Any ninja that questions my abilities will end up with egg on their face. There we go. Slow clap for that. Wonderful. Slow clap. Typically, I would hate everything about this, but this show is just embracing the cheese, and I gotta love it, you know? Just, you you have to go all in, you know? Just go all in, and they are loving it. And, and once again, the perfect length intros for everybody. Like, the little segments they're doing are just, just, ah, I, I couldn't be more happy with how long they are, with just the right amount of info to remind you who they are. And then get him on the course. I love it. All right. I, I think I found. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, boy. You ain't playing. They got the, t- the country twang. Let's get it. Oh, Lordy. Yep. Okay. Go A&W. <laughs> Bringing it all. <laughs> I think they nailed it. I think it was perfect. Oh, that is dope. I'm so glad they are, they aren't just sticking with like four tracks, you know, and it's just the same tracks. Nope, they're going all in. I love it. Now, now we have to like think of like which teams are going to get what, you know? Like there what team's going to get like the hardcore death metal? Listen. Didn't we have a death metal guy in in Travis Wineland this episode? Like Yeah, we did. Where yeah. was the death metal for him? <laughs> Maybe they didn't. I didn't notice it. I don't think they did though. I went back while I was editing, and it turns out that they did. So here it is. Going for Team Tarzan is six foot five inch Travis Winan. The four time Ninja Warrior veteran marches to the feet of his own drop. Not in a million years would I guess that Travis Wineland, <laughs> Mr. Tall, Pretty Boy, model looking dude, is hardcore death metal. <laughs> R- would you expect that? Uh, hardcore vegan what was he in vegan yoga something I the, kept vi- saying the viking that. viking whatever yeah viking, death metal yeah yeah i, I don't know <laughs> I, I maybe like props, that, uh, be you like live your life man just like you know who am i to judge looks and everything just i would have never in my life expected that <laughs> that's a, awesome he's a little baby face but at the same time he's you know he's all ripped and he's got tattoos so i mean you gotta give him that mm-hmm but yeah, looking at the let's go back to the finals here. <laughs> the uh, oh, are we off? Are we done with our little side trip? <laughs> I think so. I think we are for now. We'll come back to it because I we'll, think people want people want the side trip, right? <laughs> maybe we'll uh, we'll take a look at next week when we look at next week's uh, matchups. We'll try to guess what kind of songs they'll have. That'll be the nice. how we'll tie it in. Let's do it. But I gotta say, man, the the best race I think I've ever seen on team Ninja warrior Ninja versus Ninja or anything wasn't the one that they gave the, the big award to whatever the heck it's called the Mitsubishi, whatever is Carson Voiles versus Chris DeGangi. That first run that they did, they looked exhausted by the zigzag climb. I don't Man, think they appreciated awesome. how long the course was and they were just racing full out and then realized they get this, great big monstrosity in front of them still to do and Carson gets to the top first and hits the blue light instead of the buzzer like it was the craziest (laughs) race 
ever. What heartbreak, man. That is, that is heartbreaking. But it just led to the narrative. Like, this course is no joke. And I, really, Rich, I have to go back. Like, were the initial runs and not the relays the entire course, the entire length course? Like, that shocked me. And I feel like I shouldn't be shocked because they must have done it last week. But I totally forgot. Everybody, people were falling early last week and i was looking forward to this oh th- that's why yeah as they were racing oh, along i like are we going to get to see the whole course this time and see how tired they are by the end because i thought the, they're going way too fast there's no way you can go at a full clip through the whole thing it turned out gotcha. it was wrong we kind of got to see that with lance and john to some extent but man i gotta tell you though i'm loving this the the fact that they like break out the entire full course or extended course, I believe they call it um, to even the, the one-on-one runs, not the relays. And I I don't know, this is kind of what you want to see in the finals. Everything needs to be amped up and they, they bring it. And really when it comes to this final portion, anybody that make that wins earns it. It's not something where, Oh, you're just fast in the small portion. Like, it's no longer about just being fast in a short period of time. You also have to have that cardio and the will to get through it because this course is going to exhaust you to a point that you are not prepared for and, or, or maybe prepared for, but you guys know what I mean. Um, this, I really enjoy. I really enjoy the fact that these guys are really, really pushing themselves to the point where, as you saw, man, Guy was so exhausted, he didn't even know what, know what to press. They look completely wiped at the end of this. This is like a full-on city course. I mean, not quite to that extent, but it's pretty darn close. It certainly would hold up against, you know, earlier seasons of A&W. This would have been, you know, hardly anybody could finish it. Now they're doing it as fast as they possibly can in a race. Like, it is nuts. Mm. It is so cool, though. I love it. Yeah, this would be a legit, like, stage one Vegas finals, like, in earlier seasons, right? <laughs> so, yeah, pretty good, man. And uh, I don't know what to say. The one thing that I really enjoyed towards the end of this episode was the fact that the Breakfast Club got a little game. Like, they, they got their game uh, gamesmanship uh, on where... In multiple runs, I think two different runs, they were blocking the other, their competitors. Yeah. They were using the other competitors' lanes, just completely just dominating and being like, this is mine. No, 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 th- this this is mine now. <laughs> and I was loving every aspect of it. What was it? La Breakfast? Or, La Breakfast. Uh, Jesse LeBrec, like, um, w- changed the lanes in the floating tiles and just went the other way to the point where the other woman had to, like, go to, like, stop go to the other side and readjust from there to the and also i I forgot she did something else but just just going on to another run like there was a moment where the two guys were like crashing into each other and i wish i knew which one run it was but man it was just entertaining well that's the thing you can't even pick because it happened more than once where they were banging into each other it is it is all a war on the course they are not taking it lightly this season at all they are bumping into each other they're getting in each other's way intentionally love it all that's left is to see somebody get elbowed you know just <laughs> <laughs> bring on the dodoe just embrace it <laughs> they'll have to uh, start putting in a penalty box for them to go sit out for part of it i gotta mention here i absolutely stunning to watch lance picus do the zigzag climb i wish we could have seen him do that against somebody else Ooh. at a more fair like he was so far behind it was ridiculous how fast did he get up there that he was almost able to catch john who was near the top when he started like it was just nuts just think about how exhausted the competitors were earlier and now think about the fact that lance Picas went through the entire course without stopping and flew through that zigzag i mean man is holding on so much weight for a size and yet has insane cardio i mean all the respect in the world guy is a complete gamer i will say that maybe just maybe his spartan race training has something to do with yeah, it maybe. just saying you know spartans pretty cool get some good uh get some good cardio there but 
I I just man, it I was in awe of the fact that he flew through that so quickly. And I, I don't know, guys, <laughs> I've done that spider climb before. Not as exact, but just like a horizontal spider climb. That thing's no joke, no joke at all. <laughs> and it's insane just seeing him just like a like a spider monkey just fly through that thing. Yeah. Uh, so the breakfast. But club. also, I got to say, sorry, Rich, be, yeah. before we go on, I just remembered also John Alexis Jr. has very, very long limbs. The spider climb is a very, very difficult obstacle for somebody with long limbs. So props to him. Uh, to for just getting through that because th- that's an obstacle where very much he is at a major major disadvantage that's a very good point yeah yeah i was i wasn't entirely sure he'd be able to do it after hearing your experiences with doing it so i, I was thinking that might be too much to ask of for uh for his size and the fact that it zigzags it's not just a straight up spider climb mm-hmm. but he did it uh and the breakfast club ended up clean sweeping again now, I'm pretty sure they did that multiple times in previous seasons, too. And it was like two freaky falls that knocked them out of it before. Like, they are absolutely unstoppable. And they're looking good. I got to say, they are looking very good. If they go against Team Ronin in the finals, who would you have? Because, unfortunately, I'd still have to say I've got Team Ronin. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I think I still would, but it's not as much of a... a clear... It's going to be close. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say this. It will very much depend on the obstacles that are presented. Because if we had the obstacles of last week in this episode, I feel like Tyler Yamauchi's team would have a much better time on the course. And maybe La Breakfast Club wouldn't be as dominant as they are. The this These obstacles really played towards people with longer wingspans so yeah the the obstacles presented in the final will also make a major major difference yeah that is a good point um so let's take a look at next week's competitors let's look at these matchups uh we've got party time brian arnold barclay stockett and jake murray Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, the Brazi Bros, Lucas Gomez, Brittany Reed, and Alexio Gomez. Yeah. The Fast Cats with Karsten Williams, Lauren Keen, Lauren Keen, and Kevin Klein. And the All American Ninjas with Jonathan Horton, April Steiner Bennett, and Paul Ham. Oh man, that is <laughs> those are some teams. Uh I will say this. Brazi Bros, that is a very young, hungry team. Brazy Bros, as much as I like to joke about them, they are improving year by year. Very fast. Fast Cats, Carson Williams is so incredible and good. Kevin Klein's good. Lauren Keen's good. But I feel like Carson Williams in particular, that guy is a guy that would play spoiler. And I feel like on Team Ninja Warrior, for former seasons where the team captain can make a major, major difference, he would be somebody to really, really watch out for. Unfortunately, all the teams, even all American Ninjas, they're all against Party Time, and Party Time's going to just destroy. Party Time all the way for me. It's not even close. Yeah, I think so. I, I definitely could be wrong, uh, but looking at the other teams with some, you know, some really strong talent in there, Brittany Reed especially... I think we'll see her do some really great stuff. I'm really interested to see her go up against Barclay. I think Jonathan Horton is really great, but also going to have the same advantage disadvantage that Tyler had. So I think that's, depending on the obstacles, that could really count against them. We'll, uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But uh, yeah, I got party time for sure. They were one of my three picks anyway. <laughs> for a good reason, man. Like, I could very easily see them winning the whole thing. Jake Murray. I'm really interested to see Jake Murray because that guy has been on eight hair this past year also barclay stockett she is very very fast very first of all i met her in person awesome person human being just like the nicest person ever um what's up barclay but i gotta say it's always entertaining to see somebody her size compete and and just kill it right and i really want to see her up against some of these tall competitors because Brittany Reed is not short. Nope. <laughs> she is very, very tall. So that's going to be very interesting seeing them side by side. Will it be a situation similar to this episode tonight where we had um, John Alexis Jr., you know, playing to his to his strengths of being so tall? Or are we going to see Barclay Stockett just being like, no, it doesn't matter. I'm going to destroy 
You know, if you guys remember, Casey Catanzaro did phenomenal on Team Ninja Warrior. Like, her height played no no major detriment at all. So I, I want to see Barclay stock it, you know, um, take on that mantle. You know, she already has, but, like, really play up to, to the point where she is the new speed little speed demon that could, you know? Okay, and one last thing uh, before we wrap this up. USA versus the world is coming up this weekend. Um, so actually, t- the day after this is released. So tomorrow, if you're listening to this, on March 11th, USA versus Man, the world I, is coming up on NBC. I have been sleeping on that so much. Like, <laughs> Rich just told me that right before the episode. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Man. It's so easy to forget we've got I, Ninja versus Ninja so you can get distracted. And plus, you know, a few little things going on in your life that might be uh, distracting you as well. Yeah, this whole week's been a blur, like legit. But really, I mean, I really. I, I don't know much. I haven't been, you know, reading up on it. So give everybody like a little rundown of a preview of it because really I, I need it too. So things are changing up a little bit this year. We've got four teams competing with four members on each team. We have North America, Europe, Latin America, and Asia. That is awesome. That is really cool. And on Team America, like it's not North America. It's America. There's not a Canadian on that thing. <laughs> We've got Joe Morovsky, <laughs> Drew Dreschel, Najee Richardson, and Sean Bryan. That is a team Sounds right there. Right. <laughs> yeah, that that's is... exactly who I'd pick. Oof, that is a team, and that sounds about right. I'm, I'm very excited because they're implementing, you know, a new blood into into the team, and and I think really I think Sean Bryan and Najee are going to really show what they're made of. It's fun because on these episodes, they're kind of representing all the American Ninja Warriors, and they I feel like they're just extra motivated. So I don't know about the other teams, but I'll tell you this. Team Asia look is looking pretty legit. I'm, I'm really excited about Team Asia. We've got, uh, let's see, Tamahiro Kawaguchi, who's definitely been on Sasuke multiple years. Phenomenal, phenomenal competitor. Uh, he's one of the taller competitors from Team Asia, and I, I don't know. I'm really excited to see him. I, when I say taller, I mean he's not that tall, to be honest with you, <laughs> compared to, you know, <laughs> for Sasuke, he, he is. Um, very, very talented guy. I believe he's been to Stage 3, just done very well. So this is a guy to keep an eye out for. It, it's hard because every time I, I talk about Sasuke competitors, they're doing great, but then... USA versus the world is predicated also on speed and you just don't know how fast they are compared to some of their compatriots from America and Europe. And I think Europe's also one of the keys because Europe usually is very, very heavy, insanely heavy when it comes to rock climbing side. But if there's anybody to talk about when it comes to team Asia, we've got to talk about Yusuke Morimoto guys. Uh, if there is anybody that's going to complete stage three in this USA versus the world, it's going to be Yusuke Morimoto. This guy is I, I don't even know how to describe it. This is the guy to watch. This guy has achieved total victory. This guy is probably the strongest, I would say, when it comes to stage three out of any of the comparators, even Drew Dreschel. And uh, yeah, I cannot freaking wait to see this guy on the course. Just, oh my God, just... If you haven't seen him run, look, Google him. Google this guy. And, yeah, I mean, the other comparators, like, it's whatever. But these two guys, I want you to keep an eye out for from Team Asia. Because, as we've seen in previous years, Team Asia usually, unfortunately, gets the wrong at, raw end of the stick when it comes to, uh, I guess, doing well. And, and I hope this is their year to not not necessarily win, but at least get some points, make it, make it uh, contentious. Okay, and I looked at Team Europe, and their team captain is Sean McCall once again. Shocker. Ugh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about somebody who's going to beat Stage 3, you got Sean McCall is going to destroy it. So I, he, I'm i a huge fan of his, obviously. You've probably heard me gushing before, mainly because he's the closest thing we have to a Canadian Ninja Warrior. But besides him, Alexander Myers is also back, who was also very good on previous USA vs. the Worlds. So it should be a good matchup. I, I don't recognize the other two. This is their first time competing. One's from Team Ninja Warrior 
Denmark and the others from Sp- uh, Ninja Warrior Spain. So they are ninja veterans just for other countries. We'll see how they make out on their first time in Vegas. Yeah, exciting, man. When it comes to Team Land America, I mean, we have two guys that are coming back from USA versus the world before. But I mean, I don't know. None of these names are going to stand out to you guys. So I would say that Team Latin America is the team where they come in with maybe the least expectations. And because of that, they can play a big dark horse and spoiler because I don't necessarily know how much the competitors know about these guys. So, yeah, just keep an eye out for Team Latin America. I don't really have much to say about them. They're kind of just a mystery, but you never know. They're on this for a reason, guys. They are on this show for a reason. Yeah, and we'll link. Uh, AW Nation has a full breakdown on each of the teams uh, if you really want to know more about them because there is lots of cool stuff. Even, you know, we didn't give you much on Team Latin America, but if you look through here, you see, you know, like, professional free runners, certified master teachers of parkour. They have lots of qualifications, this should be a great matchup and uh, looking forward to it. Sunday is going to be fun. Yeah. Who you got? Uh, Just so I don't pick us. I mean, I, you know what? I got to pick USA. I mean, come on. That team is ridiculous. Yeah. It's going to be USA. Yeah. <laughs> I it, Maybe Europe or Asia, you know, it could be anybody, but I feel like USA really has the strong competitors. And I think the key is also going to be the experience. A lot of these competitors have experience in obstacle courses, but Team USA is going to have insane experience on the obstacles presented on this course. And I think that's the key. I just think they're like all around, like some of the best ninja athletes there are. I just can't see them not winning. Yeah. That said, I mean, every single year, USA versus the world, very fun, very entertaining some surprises and very fun matchups and very close too. it's we keep thinking it's going to be a blowout and it really isn't usually it's it's very close matchups yeah so just i'm excited three hours guys three hours of some awesome awesome a and w action i can't wait all right so that is it for this week thank you all for listening if you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com. I am at Ninja Podcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And Bijan, how can they reach you? Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151. That is B-I-J-A-N-151. Shout out to everybody that I hung out with in LA this week. Uh, just the time of my life. I love you all. Thank you for being so welcoming. And yeah, just I'll have more to say later, but love you all. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great week. Peace.